Hello and welcome to the scenario Eastbound Manifest Part 1 from the Arizona Divide Route. We are currently driving the EMD F45 ATSF unbranded locomotive. We'll be starting at Williams and we'll be going via Williams Junction East South Track. And we'll be traveling eastbound to Flagstaff South Track and stopping at Flagstaff East South Track. We'll be waiting for the westbound train 337 to clear the junction up ahead before we can depart. The recording for this video was intended to be for a different style of video, but through editing I wasn't happy with the way it was turning out. So instead of wasting the footage, I decided to turn it into a scenario guide. The video does contain a lot of external shots, so it's not really practical for learning a scenario, so I do apologise for that. However, I know a lot of you freight fans enjoy your external shots. Due to this though, some of the locations for milepost and speed boards located at the bottom of the screen will be slightly out of their exact location. The map on the left is more or less correct. It was mapped out from a full cab run for the scenario. Except milepost 378 is in the wrong location and 377 is missing. However, as this is intended to be an external video, I didn't pay much attention to the speed either. The commuter run guides will mainly show the speed boards and signal idents. The freight maps though will show speed boards and mileposts. Also added between where it says next milepost and speed, you will sometimes see a whistle board show up. This indicates when I'm using my bell and horn. Our setup is two F45s and two SD40-2s pull in at the front and we'll be hauling 57 cars. So our first mile post we'll be coming up to once we depart will be 378 and we'll be departing at 40 miles per hour. We'll just wait for this AI train to finish passing. The map itself will be released, but it probably won't be for a couple of weeks. I still have to do, well, I have to fix my milepost that I've uh, screwed up on it, and also some locations I need to fix up them as well. But we are almost ready to go. Probably about another 15 cars left. And the switch up ahead you do need to change manually. It does not automatically change. Once again using track IR for the onboard shots as I always use track IR for pretty much everything I can. And then this is the end of the AI train. We'll wait for it to clear the junction and we'll hit the switch. There we go. So we'll change the junction and we will advance our throttle. So straight away we'll be coming up to some whistleboards as we go through Williams. and departing at 40 miles per hour. Next milepost will be milepost 378. This one is one of the ones that I messed up on the map, so it's located just after William Station. And we'll 
just blow our horn warning everyone on the station that I am coming through. Here's milepost 378, so the next one will be a milepost 377. Coming up past Williams Station, and after that we'll have Williams Siding just on the left of us. So I hope you guys do enjoy some of these external shots. I don't really do anything like that, mainly I'm all cab only. Probably like the last 10 videos I've mixed in a few externals in there. But I really enjoy playing cab only, track IR, no hard. The communication says you may be held at East Williams Junction for GHULB westbound green, which is currently waiting on the south track to be overtaken by another westbound. I think one thing I should have done differently for this route map is because it's freight they're always they always look different in the uh, the map screen in game so I probably should have zoomed in a little more <coughs> before I drew it in Photoshop and there's milepost 377 next one will be 376 But yeah, because I did the map a little bit further out, it is a bit more squishy to put all my information in there. So I think for the next uh, freight map I do, yeah, I'll probably do it a bit more zoomed in. Besides the full run video, this is really the first time I've really played this route. When I do full runs, I, well, freight ones, I basically just, you know, set point A to B, increase the throttle and play on YouTube. I don't really pay too much attention, which is never a good thing because I have derailed in freight runs many, many times. Doing commuter runs, especially the uh, UK, it's a bit harder because I do get AWS. So once I set my throttle, I'm basically got my finger on Q and I'm constantly pressing it the entire run. Because again, yeah, many times before I did that, I just got sick of always having emergency brake supply. So even though it's a pain in the ass to constantly span Q for about an hour, it's pretty much quicker in the long run. And just around this bend we'll have a milepost 376 and next one will be a 375.
I did forget to mention though that it is only four miles from where we departed at Williams to a Williams Junction which we are very quickly approaching. And another thing I noticed about this route, I don't know, I'm pretty sure it is a bug, but when you have speed decreases, the speed does not decrease when you actually see your speedboard, it decreases when you come to the speedboard going the opposite way. So surely it's not like that in real life, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's a bit strange if it is. Anyway, we are coming up to a speed increase of 70 miles per hour, and that'll be at the signal and also milepost 375. And because we have a westbound train coming in, we will just slow down just to give the, the end of that train enough time to clear the junction up ahead. There's milepost 375. And here is our first objective, Williams Junction East South Track. We'll just be going via this one. And it is seven miles from Williams Junction to Shallander. My apologies if any of this is pronounced incorrectly. On the left of this as well is Williams Junction a siding. As for Train Sim World 2 because Clinchfield has been released, as much as I would really enjoy you know, purchasing this content and making my full runs for. I, I honestly do not enjoy playing Train Sim World 2 at all. And the main reason, not because they don't have Track IR implemented yet, is purely just because of the notifications you get every single time you do an objective. You have to put your master switch on, you get this really annoying sound. You sit down, you get this really annoying sound. And the sad part is, is they have given us no option whatsoever to turn it off. Yeah, it really does make me feel like I'm playing an arcade game rather than a simulator. Even though they try and say Train Sim World 2 is the most realistic train simulator there is. Not only that, I've also noticed that signals in Train Sim World 2 are kind of connected to objectives. So if you have a red signal, that will not turn green until you've probably reached the go via marker. And the thing with Train Simulator 20XX is it actually works with the AI. So if you have a train coming that's going to be a red signal, if that train passes, it'll turn green. So I really do not know why they have made Train Sim World 2 that way. I think it's been, yeah, it's got a lot of ups and downs. But apart from that, like, the, the concept and the idea is, is there, but, yeah. Here's milepost 373, and we'll be heading towards 372. But maybe when this channel gets a bit bigger, um, and I can start monetizing and getting some funds and I'm really not going to care about purchasing that content but at the moment like it's coming out of my own pocket and I have my own bills to pay I've got my own outside world to enjoy plus I've got my own non-train simulator related 
games to buy. So, I do apologize for that. So we'll be coming up to a 50 mile per hour speed reduction. So there's the 50 mile per hour sign, but on the HUD, we are still allowed to travel at 70. I'm not sure if I actually show in this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I go on board. Yeah. So you will come across the speed board from the westbound side and that's when we have to actually be at 50 miles per hour. And there is milepost 372, so we'll be heading towards 371. As for Train Simulator 20XX full runs, uh, there was a new route released a couple days ago. I'll probably be getting that on Tuesday. I'll be doing my full run. Uh, I'll probably see if I'll do scenarios for it. It really depends on if it's content that, you know, I enjoy enough to take out of my personal life. But, um, yeah, I probably will do one scenario at least for every route I buy. After that I'll have the Granger Heartland, uh, I think it was also the Quazuli, those two have been asked for by a couple of uh, viewers, and I think there was a third one that I do not recall but I do have it written down somewhere. I don't mind taking requests but again, like I'm not going to rush out and buy that DLC if I don't own it. I have to you know, put my own, my own funds first. But I'm more than happy for people to, to suggest and I'll add it to my wish list. And when the time's right, I will definitely buy it. I've also got a massive backlog of uh, routes that I have not ever played. I tend to buy things in sales and yeah, I have never installed it. So I'm hoping to eventually get around to all of that. And downside is well, it's basically back from 2015, 2016, sorry, 2014, 2015 when I was like mainly into train sim and I was heavily uploading videos back then. After that I just like, yeah, I kept uh, wandering off to other games and just forgetting about Train Sim. But since I've been back, I came back well, late last year, like I've, I've enjoyed it. Sometimes I don't enjoy the editing, like these videos are quite painful to do, especially in you know, they're not really painful to do, it's just that this computer is on its way out, so that that's what makes it painful to do. But hopefully I'll get a new computer this year. See what Santa brings me, yeah? Uh, we are currently heading to milepost 369 at the moment. We are also into Shalanda. And I do apologize if I have been drowning out all of the sounds. But there is our milepost at 369. Still have to say one of my favourite freight routes. It's probably Canadian Mountain Passes. 
I have wanted to reinstall that and do some more videos for that, so maybe I might do although Steven's pass is pretty good as well. Maybe I'll have to install both, give them both another crack and then uh, probably say I like them both equal. But we are passing a AI train, a B40-8W. And we now have six miles from Shalander to Maine. Then from Maine we'll be going via Bellamont and then we'll be heading to Flagstaff. And we're coming up on milepost 368 and now heading for 367. I think the downside, downside for uh, mapping out freight routes is probably the milepost because it's just a lot more more work you have to do trying to look for these mileposts. So I'm sure there's going to be routes out there where you know I physically just can't see them for some reason, or I'm just blind, like at the start, the ones I missed at the start. Yeah, even though they were because I went back and double checked and they were like right there, right in front of me. Here's mile post 367, just at the end of this street. There it is. And still travelling at 50 miles per hour. Yeah, that's because, you know, this was supposed to be external style video. I really didn't care about my speed on my external shots, I just, yeah. Just went for it. But it looks like I am actually trying to control my speed here. Using the good old dynamic brake. I'm also still working on doing my scenario maps as a full guide so it will have like every scenario mapped out. I'll probably have additional information about the full route map. Um, probably just bits, bits and pieces here and there. So I am hoping to have them all done soon. So that's milepost 366. But yeah, I'm still working out all the kinks and trying to get the flow going. I haven't actually completed one. I'm still working on the Birmingham scenario maps, but um, once I plan out what I'm actually going to have in them, it'll probably be a bit easier for all the new release videos coming out. New release maps, I mean. Roots. There we go. I got it. I got there in the end. But as much as people would probably want a just a full route map, you can't really do that because you know some some routes have several tracks, and I'm certainly not going to sit there and map out every single track. So yeah, it's just so much easier doing uh, scenario maps because that way you only need to know what speed you're doing on that track for that scenario. I mean, a lot of the maps for the scenarios you can just reuse in other scenarios anyway because they all follow the same tracks, but... With the time that I have to actually try and get these things done, it's just the, the easiest solution for me. And also because I am a YouTuber, I like making my videos and I like getting my views. 
I won't be releasing the scenario maps straight away with the video because why watch a video when you can just have a have a map straight away it kind of defeats the purpose of me putting in the effort to actually make these videos but I'm only going to make these actual scenario guide videos for one, one scenario per route because yeah, I don't want to be spending all my time doing that for every single scenario because a lot of work actually does go into them And the US signaling, I've never really understood it. I've only, like, I've never even really researched it before. Because I've found in a lot of, like, US freight routes, I've just had no need to use the signals. Because it's just, you get going and you finish up at point, up point B. But yeah, earlier this morning I was actually reading just to see what the the colours on the signals actually mean, so it's fairly straightforward. And we're coming up to mile post 364. And also a 70 miles per hour speed increase. So uh, just another mile until we have reached Maine. And also thinking of possibly doing a giveaway at 2,000 subs. Not 100% sure yet, but I will probably be giving away a track IR. But that's just a maybe. If I don't do that one at 2,000 subs, I'm definitely gonna do it in the future. Because I believe everyone should have a track IR. And there's mile post 363, and we'll be heading towards 362. I did also buy a Toby eye tracker for our uh, Hunter Call of the Wild because that just does not support track IR. So I thought, well, and they're actually never going to support track IR because they have a contract with Co Toby. So I thought, oh, I might as well just, you know, cough up the money. This was a couple years ago to buy a Toby because I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's pretty similar, but yeah, I got it. I was pretty disappointed with it. People say track AR is for, you know, multi-screen purpose, but that's not the case at all. Because if you have multi-screen, you do not need a track AR or a Toby, because you simply just have that wider range of view. But yeah. Toby does have a head tracking in it as well. It kind of tracks the uh, whites of your eyes. When you turn your head, it changes your angles of your eyes and that will simulate a head turn in the game, but it's quite terrible because every time you do it, your head kind of tilts. And you also have no customization with it at all. While with Track IR you can customize, you know, I can move my head in real life and I can have it set to move my head in game 360 degrees if I wanted. Here's my post 362. I think that's a lot of, uh, you know, over the years I've read some comments about people not liking Track IR purely because they say it hurts their neck and everything, but that all comes down to them just not customising the uh, the movement. Because the way I have it set up, I'll probably move my head 
maybe five degrees if that and that's set up to look you know directly left and right 90 degrees of me like when you turn your head you do have to keep your eyes on the screen but like you get used to that quite quickly because I first started using it for Microsoft Flight, Flight Simulator X as I am a real life student pilot as well so that actually is what made me get my real life pilot's license because I am afraid of heights but aviation is quite interesting as is trains because I knew nothing about well I still kind of know nothing about trains but the only reason I brought Train Simulator 2014 back in the day was because track IR was uh, not implemented but a kind young sir called JSJ he modded track IR into it and yeah, that simply just made me enjoy driving trains. I've never been interested in in my whole life. We passed the milepost at 361, still travelling at 70 miles per hour. And we should be soon coming up to Bellamont. I can't say I've really played many shunting scenarios for US freight. It's mainly just done the uh, UK shunts. Here's my post 360. I know I've done a few because I have videos back from 2014, I think. I think there's been like Cajun Pass possibly which I did recently reinstall because I am going to be doing a full run of that one uh, probably won't be a couple weeks it's got some other things to do also be doing horseshoe curve full run I do like the trees in this route though, I think they're well made. I can't say I'm a big fan of the route itself, because these things kind of, they're not really my kettle of fish. I'm more, when it comes to the freight lines, I'm more mountainous, rather than uh, kind of just straight tracks and like I think the location of it's pretty cool and I'll probably will give it a proper go with some scenarios outside of making videos but well it's mainly I'm going to be doing all the scenarios really just so I could map out the, the scenarios there was milepost 359 but yeah I do find the uh when I did this scenario, like the grades, a little bit challenging because it's just constant up and downs, up and downs. But really, like I, I don't play my scenarios. I've stopped playing them you know, for a couple of years, worrying about my points because. At the end of the day, it's not a freaking arcade game, so I couldn't care less if I get max points. So if I overspeed here and there a little bit, then whatever. Here's milepost 358.
and just coming up on Belmont now. Yeah, there isn't actually any shunting scenarios for this route, so I don't know if that has to do with the locomotives um, included, just not being used for shunting, but yeah, as I said before, I really don't know a great deal about trains, especially like being Australian and playing trains for, you know, from Germany, US, UK, like, yeah, I don't even know anything about Australian trains, to be honest. But here we are at Belmont. And it will just be 15 miles now to Flagstaff. I think it was one of my videos back in 2014 that someone actually told me how to use the, the bell correctly and the uh, horn. Whether I actually am, but... Because, yeah, I was told two, two long, one short, one long. There was mile post 356, so heading for 355 now. I do have to search on Google for the ATSF logo because I really don't like playing unbranded stuff like main reason I like simulators is because of like real world world brands that's why I've never brought any fictional routes and I never will there's milepost 355 now heading 354 And up ahead, just past milepost 354, we'll have a reduction to 65 miles per hour. But let me know if you guys enjoy the external shots because it's just something different from what I usually do. Still it will be mainly cab only and 100% UK uh, videos like scenario guys will be full cab riding because yeah there's so many speed boards and stations to worry about like you really need to to focus on all that stuff to actually learn it rather than you know, watching the, the train roll by. We're now in our 65 mile per hour speed zone. And we're approaching milepost 353. There is a couple, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know there's some routes with locomotives who have extremely bright lights, so you literally cannot read any mileposts. So I know. What is it? Surfers are... Uh, Surfliner. The Los Angeles one. Can't remember. <laughs> but yeah, I usually play that one with uh, no lights on just so I could see the speed boards and mileposts. Pacific Surfliner, that's the one I got there. But anyway, we are 
approaching a 45 mile per hour speed reduction along with the mile post at 352. I do like Pacific Surfliner though. I think that was my one of my first videos I did. First one was um, London to Favishan. And then I think I did a couple others and then it was Pacific Surfliner. Because I was like so new into train sim back then, when I saw that um, it was coming out, like I was getting pretty excited because it looked pretty sweet. Which, yeah, I wasn't let down. I do like it. And I might actually just think and install that again. I think that's one of the only routes I've uploaded every single scenario for. I know they're all completed anyway, which I don't ever complete all scenarios on any routes. That and London Faversham are the only ones. Next milepost we'll be coming up to is 351. have about nine more miles till we get to Flagstaff. Our destination anyway, because we'll be stopping at milepost 342. heading towards milepost 350. Still travelling at 45 miles per hour but we will have a 40 mile per hour speed reduction coming up. And that will be in one mile. But maybe I should add, probably not on the bottom part where it has next mile post and speed but maybe I'll add mile post into the actual UK scenario maps I just figured that a signal ident will kind of play that same role but I guess there are some routes out there where you know the signals are pretty spaced look into it anyway. I know the the mile post for UK is kind of hard to see in the game. But yeah, I don't really want to be flying around free cam just so I can map it all out. But we'll see. I'll do some testing. And here's mile post 350. I also haven't done any mapping for any German route yet, so I'm not sure how I'm going to be doing that one yet with, uh, you know, PZB and all that. Where it's got like the three, the uh, the break distance in markers. I'm not sure if I'll be including those because it depends how how close I create the map. Because I think I'll need, you know, pretty zoomed in for that one. But we will see. So coming up to mile post 348. Sorry, no, 349. which is right here and next one is 348 another F45 AI train heading westbound
and around this bend we'll have milepost 348. And shortly after that one we will have a 35 mile per hour speed reduction. And then we'll start heading into Flagstaff. So I don't mind the scenery in this second half of the uh, the route, but I know when I was doing the full run, like the first almost half of the route is just literally desert. Like the location's pretty cool, but I've, I haven't actually done a cab ride in it yet. I don't know if I could keep myself awake, but I'm interested to find out. So coming up will be our 35 mile per hour speed reduction. And there is some light popping in signals. With the movie map I've kind of set it to go milepost to milepost so that's why speeds and signals are kind of like not in the centre there. When I do the UK commuter runs I've been doing speedboard to signal to speedboard and so forth. But yeah, maybe I should have done signal speedboard milepost for US. Probably do that from now on. Still been thinking about doing some farm sim videos. I also want to buy the bus because I do hate that name, <laughs> the bus. Because yeah, it does look pretty damn good, but yeah, just the state of my PC, I honestly don't know how well it will run. Fern bus runs like a bag of shit on it. Uh, even though I do enjoy fern bus, um, even ATS and ETS2 in certain locations, it'll stutter quite severe and you know, I don't mean like train sim stutters they're just normal for everyone unfortunately but also train sim world 2 like I've got it on pretty low settings and it still lags quite a bit for me even though it'll be uninstalled soon Sad face. So after we reach milepost 346, we'll be coming up to a 40 mile per hour speed board. And I think it's 40 miles for the rest of the run. Which we only have four more miles to go. There's milepost three, four, six. Yeah, for part two, I will probably do full cab ride. I'm not too sure yet. Uh, if you did enjoy all the external shots in this style of uh, freight run, just yeah, let me know. I 
I do like this part of the track, it's pretty cool. Looking over Flagstaff. Which I actually can with track IR. And here is our 40 mile per hour speed increase. And here's mile post 345. And then we'll have a whistle board as we go through Flagstaff Station. And at Flagstaff Station is also our second scenario objective, which is Flagstaff South Track. Communication reads, track work is going on ahead. You'll be stopping at the signals just before mile post 342. You should just clear the grade crossing if you pull forward enough. Once you stop, this part of the scenario will end. And there's AR train ASD 42 dash, sorry, SD 40 dash 2. And mile post 344. So next one will be mile post 343. at the end of this video like I was not paying attention one bit so I literally do not stop before the signal I had my full main brakes I had my loco brake and I had my dynamic brake all full and I like still skidded past so note to future self pay more attention when you are approaching the end of the scenario Coming up to another whistle board, and then we'll be at milepost 343, and on our last mile of the scenario. Do they even call it a whistle board in America? I'm not too sure. We'll be coming up to a 50 mile per hour speed board, but as we are slowing down, we do not need to really care about that.
So here we are at our third and final scenario objective to stop at Flagstaff East South Track. And I am trying to stop. I've got all brakes going. Literally does not look like it's slowing down one bit. And there we go, we are almost at a stop. But I do thank you all for watching. And any suggestions, feedback, please let me know in the comments section. Thanks and I'll see you next one.